In this video, I'm going to show some examples of how to read and interpret box and whisker plots. Another name for box and whisker plots is just box plots. And these plots are just a visual way of showing some attributes of a set of data. One part that box plots will show us is the minimum of the set of data. That will be represented by this whisker here on the left-hand side. It's this point at the very end of it. At the other end of the box plot, where we have this big long whisker right here, this point represents the maximum of our set of data. So we can then find the range of the set of the data by taking the maximum and subtracting the minimum. This line in the box is the median of our set of data, which means I have the same number of pieces of data on this half as I do on this half. Now we can see just in, in looking at example question number one that obviously on this half right here our data is much more spread out. I know that the number of pieces of data over here is the same as the number of pieces of data over here but this data extends to a much larger number. If we were to take just this half of, the, of our data and we were to find the median of that half of the data this line right here would represent the median of just this half of the, of the data, with this as the minimum and this as the maximum of that half of the data. If we were to do the same thing with the other half of the data, this line right here would represent the median of this half of the data, with this as the minimum and this as the maximum. We call this point right here the lower quartile, and this point right here the upper quartile. So that makes this part, all of these uh, the pieces of data that are inside this box, they are called the interquartile range. Box and whisker plots are useful for determining just how spread out the data is. So for example, again in question number one, it looks like we probably have an outlier over here. The majority of our data is right here inside this box. This right here tells us, because this is way far away from the box, it tells us that we have an outlier. Whereas in question two, our data appears to be fairly evenly spread out. The, the range of this upper quartile right here is, looks very similar to the range of this lower quartile. Uh, so our data doesn't appear to have an outlier in it. So looking at question one, it says... Season ticket prices for symphony orchestra performances are shown in the box and whisker plot. Which ticket price falls between the median and the lower quartile of the box and whisker plot? Here is the median, here is the lower quartile. So what we're looking for is any ticket price that falls in this tiny little rectangle here. And it looks like we're counting by fives on here, 100, 105, 10, 15, yes, counting by fives. So this point right here, this lower quartile is 105, and the median it looks to be 120, so we just want a number between 105 and 120, which is A. Question 2, a team of biologists is studying the European red deer. Data for the weight in pounds of several adult females is shown in the box and whisker plot below. What is the lower quartile weight? What we're looking for is this point right here. And again, it looks like we're counting by five. So if this point is 300, this would be 295, which is choice D. Question three, a team of biologists is studying the North American moose. Data for the weight in pounds of several adult females is shown in the box and whisker plot. What is the median weight? That's this point right here. We need to figure out what we're counting by. In this case, it's not by fives. It looks like it's by tens, 650, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Yes, it is. So 650, 660, 670, it looks like it's going to be 680 pounds.